Hi, welcome back to another week of Art Life. So we've been on this amazing, beautiful walk on this lovely English countryside and looking at some of your comments this week, a lot of you have been talking about oil painting, how oil painting can be quite intimidating or feel like somehow having a bit of a tutorial of just back to basics with the um, steps you can do with oil painting. If you're a beginner or if you're returning to it after um, a long time not painting, maybe we should do a video this week just going through how to teach a beginner to paint. And by beginner, I mean Rafe, who in the four years I've known him has never picked up a paintbrush. So um, we're going to go into the studio and we are going to experiment with some landscape painting, oil techniques, um, yeah, teaching an oil novice to paint like a master. Step one. I'm Jessie. I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. So this is actually the landscape that I think I'm going to try and experiment teaching with, um, mainly because it has water, which I adore. Um, this is a really lovely part of the day, so the light is really warm, we can see some nice yellow golden tones. Um, we've got that nice kind of horizon with the dark green in the trees, and then actually these little posts are a really nice barrier between the water, the kind of meadow, and then the trees. So it will be quite a simple, although it doesn't look simple, I think I could actually teach Ray to do this. We'll see, it might be really complicated and a disaster but I'm optimistic that this could be this could be how we begin. So we're back in the studio and um, I've set up a space for Ray to work at while he's experimenting with his first go at oil painting. So I have a nice palette here for him so he can really kind of experiment when, with them when he's mixing colors uh, with just a palette knife here. You'll see how we do that later. Um, I've got, I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, I feel like three brushes is all you'd need for your first um, attempt with just a sketch like we're doing. He might even use two, uh, literally just a nice filbert brush here, size six, you'll get a lot of pigment on that. And I think, uh, yeah, he'll find it quite easy to apply paint. Um, a smaller brush if you want to do any detail work at the end. Uh, and then a really important brush, which we keep quite dry with a rag uh, for blending. So it'll be a little bit bigger and he'll just kind of constantly be blending the oil because a little thing with oil is that it always wants to, um, push the boundaries, uh, it goes where you don't want it to go. So keeping quite a dry brush, just, you know, so it doesn't all go murky and gray is always a nice little uh, tip and tech for your technique. Uh, we'll use some linseed oil for our medium for blending. Um, a little bit of oil paint with a lot of this stuff can cover an entire wall, I swear, particularly if you have a high density uh, pigment um, color, which we might be using later. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then a bit of masking tape because we're using oil primed paper rather than canvas, just so he feels quite relaxed and like there's not too much pressure to make a massive uh, finished masterpiece and then we'll be giving it a nice masking taped edge uh, which when he pulls off at the end will be nice and crisp and look really smart um, and I think it'll give a nice effect to the work. The main thing is that he's found a composition which he he likes, he identifies with, that he is excited to work from. This isn't um, me teaching him how to paint by basically teaching him my style. I just want him to feel like he can explore his mark making, but most importantly, doing it with a landscape or a subject which he's passionate about. And that's the real key with learning how to paint. This isn't a kind of atelier training, you know, classical, this is, you know, day one. This is just an experiment in being playful with painting and feeling like it's not so intimidating. This is about making oil paint friendly. So before we sit Ray for the easel, we need to get him some oil paint. I'm thinking maybe three or four colors just to get him started. Um, his composition is gonna be very blue and green, so it'll be quite easy. Um... So we've only got four colours to work from to start with. We've got permanent sap green, genuine Naples yellow, cobalt blue, and a warm white. 
Okay, so all we need now is Rafe. So, Rafe, would you like to come and sit down? Okay. okay. Right. Okay, so doing? these are your colours. You don't need a lot of them because they are very pigment rich. Where are my brushes? You get your brushes. You get your brushes when you get your brushes. So first of all, you have to put your paint on. First thing is about getting the right colour paint. Okay. Uh, so I just want you to, one at a time, space them out, put uh, a little bit of colour on your palette. Okie dokie. So is that... A bit more. I mean, you can, a little bit more. You can do a, a little bit more. more. Yeah. That's fine. I've seen you do this so many times, so I know what I'm doing. Does it feel different doing it yourself? <laughs> I don't really know. It's too early to tell. So do I put it in any sort of order? Um, I always sort of try and uh, keep, you know, cool colours to one side, warm to yellow, but all of these are quite cool, so it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that they've got some nice space between them. I go from light them. to dark? If you want to. Okay. Every artist has their own, they get your, you get your own kind of like... Is that enough? For now, yeah, we can always add more later. That's true, you can always add more paint. You can't take it away. Don't waste paint. Because it's... it's very expensive. This one's obviously a series six, so... So what's that mean? It means it's rare and expensive and beautiful. Okay, so we use a very small... Use a very small, that's all you need of that one. I'm so nice giving you a series six. Okay, and then this one is the Cobalt Blue series five. I've already got it all over. That's what, that's what the rags are for. Is that enough? Yeah, we can add more later. Okay. Okay, so you've What's got your paint. Boss? Uh, just put some masking tape on the paper. So uh, just in a frame, uh, you can either follow the edge so it's all even, but it just sticks, sticks the paper to the canvas. I mean, I, I did A-level art a long, long time ago, but since then I have not ever picked up a paintbrush. I don't think I even really... I don't use I, oil at A-level. I never used oil at A-level, so... Um, so yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing other than what I've seen Jesse doing, which if you've seen all of Jesse's videos, you will have seen as well. Uh, and if you haven't seen Jesse's videos, then watch them because they're great. Lindsay Doyle in the pot. Okay. Mm. Used it for a while. <laughs> Oh, you got is it like glue? I need something to Just... watch my up. table. <laughs> Johnny, it's worn out oil. Ugh. Got it? No. Nope. Stop swearing on art life. <laughs> okay, I can't get that open. Let's use this little one then. So, now we need to refer to the image again. So, okay. I actually think uh, a little sketch first, um, if you're just working from your phone. Before we start mixing, before we start blending, uh, I would just say, find the composition, zoom in on where you like it. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, find what feels good. So, with the horizon line, we're doing landscape, but whatever you're doing, the eye usually seeks its sense of balance with a composition. It seeks its way out. So the horizon line that uh, Rafe draws now will define his whole composition. So it depends how you can have a really high land, tiny bit of sky, or a really like low horizon line, loads of sky. And with the same sized canvas, your canvas will then look bigger or smaller, depending on uh, where you want to put your sense of gravity. So how do I draw the horizon line? Do I do it with a ruler? Do you can actually tape? do it with masking tape, actually, because then we could do the sky and then rip it off. Quite. You'd have quite a crisp, if you want to. I want to. You want it there? I want it there. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, I mean, from this picture, we'll keep referring to it in the video, um, the sky didn't have many uh, much going on for it, apart from a very golden sun, blue sky, it was quite... Um, the sky was a little bit anemic, so I think we won't worry too much about the sky. The further something away f is from you, it's it's faded, it'll be in the distance, so it'll be softer. So anything in the distance we'll do first, make it quite soft, and then 
things that are closer to Rafe in his composition, he'll he'll make much more lucid, much brighter, much more defined. Okay, so I would say the best way to start with this, you just need to put down a, a bit of soft, soft pale blue just to kind of get into your sky, maybe a bit of yellow where the sun oh, so is. Oh, don't do with a paint, with a pencil. Well, no, because now you've done the masking tape, we'll do the pencil later. This is just basically uh... blocking in some blue. Um, now, obviously, the first thing we notice is that the cobalt blue straight out of the tube is way too dark to be the colour of the sky. Yeah. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to scoop up a bit of white, maybe half of that white. Half of it? Yeah. And then push it a bit lower on the uh, palette, a bit farther away. You've got a big palette, use it. Okay. Okay. Now scoop up a tiny bit of blue. You really, yeah, that is plenty. Might be too much. Yeah. There we go. And start mixing. Well, it's quite um, sticky. So yeah, you, that's what it's like when you don't have any uh, medium, any linseed oil. Do you like that colour? Would you like it paler? And remember, you can have artistic licence. It doesn't have to be a classical painting. It's about what colours you like. So I if, think that's perfect. Linseed oil. Yeah. yeah. And then mix into the paint. Mix all of it. No, no, no. Just a little just bit like that. Bit. See, Can you see how far it goes? Ooh, that's nice. So get it onto the paintbrush and just start blocking it in. Remember that here you want some sun, so blue and yellow make green, so you don't wanna keep an area a bit clear for, for yellow. Okay. Uh, but all of this you can block blue because that's mainly... Okay, so I'm just kind of... Blocking it in, Don't we can change blue. everything. So I want my three trees there. And then remember bit your horizon there. line is here. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. But, but that... No, 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 okay. you, can, you can go over that, make it all blue. Oh, okay. Like, apart from that little bit of yellow, it can all be blue, because when you mix yellow and blue, it goes green anyway. Okay. Oil so. painting's about layers, so trees can go over the sky. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm just making it nice and... But remember yellow, you want a bit of yellow for the sun, so keep a little bit... Oh, yeah. Do you want me to... Yeah, there you go. So you just know that that's where your sun is. Am I a terrible teacher? No, I'm a terrible student, that's what I was going to say. Um, I feel like I'm not doing this right, like the, the paint okay. brushing. So it's, I can show you how I do it, but you don't need to. So when you're painting, it's about cross hatching, but you can go all one way yeah. and keep it quite smooth and then you can go all another way. Right. But it, you, you really just need to cover, you don't, you see how you can blend it and soften it? Yeah. This almost looks like watercolour. Yeah, oil colour when it has got a lot of linseed oil is like watercolour or acrylic that's watered down. It's about layers that build up, that's how you get... But I don't want to make it too oily so then it will just soak through the paper, right? No, you've got some time. Um, okay. I would say go right to the masking tape. All of it? Yeah, down here. all of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you can add some more white if you want to get it lighter near the horizon. It's mainly about blocking in your colour. It doesn't have to be... I feel like I... So when, when people are doing it like this, kind of like... Yeah. It, does, it, does it make any difference? Well, how do you hold a pencil? Do you hold it really close? People, yeah, like this. Yeah, so how does it feel comfortable holding a paintbrush? I mean, I feel like I look better like when I do it like yeah, this. Yeah, but you have less control. The further away you are from the bristles, the Isn't less that, control you that like more like artistic license? We're just learning though. Okay. I feel like this is going to be a two hour long video. You're, You're going like, to be able to cut this down. out. I'm like, pipe down, we have <laughs> limited time. Okay, okay. So what's next? Okay, so next, I think let's get that sun in just so you have a sense of light. Different paintbrush, because that paintbrush is blue now. So if you mix a yellow colour, uh, it'll go green. So let's get a very, again, white and a little bit of yellow, similar to how you did with that one. Um, yeah, brilliant. And now you've got your blue, you'll use that for the reflection in the water as well. So keep that blue, never, oh, maybe a bit too much yellow. But try it, yeah. It's like alchemy. And then just add more, yes, that might be, a, that might be the color of the actual sun. And then maybe mix a color, maybe a bit more yellow. Maybe a tiny bit more yellow. Okay, so yeah. yellow paintbrush. You really should work at a table. This is this is silly. This is silly, but okay. Light. So it's a very light color, and we'll use this color again for the reflection of the light at the end. Um, but just 
circular, again, like a sort of circular motion. Yeah, and just keep going out. Add more paint. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, you have your block colours. Uh-huh. Um, what it's missing is a sense of depth, and white can give you that in okay. the form of clouds and the form of distance. If you notice from your picture, there's a lot more uh, white in the sun, in the clouds. Um, what might be quite helpful is to actually, you can apply it white onto the sun from the palette knife onto the composition. Does that feel like it'll be too difficult for? So oh, scoop. Do that. And if it helps you as well, I can actually like show you what I mean and then we can. I think I've seen you do it enough. You have to have the little finger up, that's always. Ha <laughs> Okay, so. Just follow the... Um... Am I doing all these kind of wispy clouds? I quite like that. Okay, do that then. You can just, it's just about blocking in colour, but I mean, yeah. Don't worry about that, it's fine. This is a sketch. That's nice, I quite like that. You want it to feel like the sky is bigger, so if in going, almost like up and in, you're creating a sense of that the eye can go out into the expanse. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I, I actually think that since you're painting like this, we might need to use actually a bigger blending brush than the one I originally thought. So what you can do is then get a big brush and just like three, mark, three marks or so. Okay. Um, but it's good, I'm, it, it helps me like learn what feels natural for so you. So I like that this part of the sun is like yeah, smeared. That stuff at the end, this is just blocking in colour. Okay. So I would... Um, so just go... Yes, soften it. That's... yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I would, I would say that you didn't need to do a... <laughs> just horizontal. Okay. Okay, and then maybe um, there's a bit of like... Yeah, a bit... do that again, like... You happy with that? Yes. Okay, well let's leave that for now then. Add a bit of blue while it's there because I feel like the colours will get quite murky. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. The way water moves, just, just slap it on. Don't feel too precious because you can cover it up with oil. Everything is changeable. And if the pigment feels too dry, add a bit more linseed oil. Okay, so I'd say that's, that's enough for now. You've just got some colour in. But again, looks a bit too blocky, so you just need to smooth it out with your big brush. Brilliant. But before you do that, um, I would say, do you know where you want to put this screen? Do you, yeah. Do you, wanna, do you want to draw an outline? Do you feel like that would help you? Or do you want me to just help you like sketch in where you need to go? Or do you want to just go, go for it? I'm just going to go for okay, it. Okay, just go for it then. So that's the kind of guy I am. Um, right. Um. Okay, you've got a small brush. Don't go too high. You can always add into the blue, but the moment you put that dark green on the blue, it's not going away. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Okay, so I'm going to... Ooh, I like that. But, but be careful, because when you blend that, it could cover the whole painting. That's a lot of pigment on that brush. Okay. So, so... But you're telling me that I've got to be careful, and now no. I've just done one one <laughs> one line, and now I have to be careful. What do I do now? I'm sort of terrified. Okay, so this is good. Okay, so maybe I've orchestrated this because most people feel like this when they have oil on a brush. Okay. So the, I would say the idea is to stick to the safe areas and then work up. So you know that there's a lot of green near this masking tape. So put a lot of green near the masking oh, that's tape. that's a good idea. Like, d don't go, you, you literally went for like the end mark. Ta-da! Oh, like, so you see, see what I mean? You've yeah. got to build it up in layers. See it as something that you do slowly over time. It's not a race oil painting. Your work will look so much better if you do it carefully. Um, see, and then you and then you know that that's green, so you, you're safe. But then and then you start to look at yeah, brilliant. You start to look at the shapes, but you see it's also getting it's mixing with the blue and the white. Yeah. It's getting lighter, so you have to keep applying. I see. So you just it's all about layers, like onions. Onions have layers. What's that from, babe? Shrek. Yes. Okay, that's great. That's really, really good. I love that. Sorry, that's so cool. It's like a cypress tree. Yeah. Um, 
you're doing a lot of horizontal lines. So if you notice, you can zoom in on a picture. Yeah. Um, there used to be this guy, Bob Ross, who used to teach you to do landscapes in the sort of 70s, 80s. And he yeah. used to have fan brushes and make perfect trees. We're not doing that. We're not doing... <laughs> go and watch an episode of Bob Ross if you want to do a perfect yeah. line. This is just about you you and colour, you and gesture. Um, so, okay, so let's attack this mark that you started with. So maybe fill in some of the area of blue. We can also soften that line and blend it so it doesn't need to be as... Yeah, because we, when we smoke it, you won't even really see all of this, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, so... And I wanna uh, do a little bit more... A bit more than just... Like that, and then with a little bit of this. But you see how when you smoke it in and blend it in, mm. it gets softer. Something farther away from you, again, remember, it gets like paler. Okay. So I want to build up the darkness down here, yeah? Yeah. I actually think that we could lower the bit of masking tape. Lower it? Or yeah. Just remove it completely. Oh. Good, right? It's quite satisfying. We could use that later. Or not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, where's that smoky brush? But you don't overdo it because it's looking. I, I like I like that kind of softness. Okay. Yeah. Happy with that? Okay. So we've got your horizon line. You've blocked in some of the scar. Yeah. Again, you could work on this for a really long time. Um, let's see what you've got. So you've done up to here, there's more layers of land before there's before water. The water. yeah. But so also, I think the water, where does it, so the water is actually... But that's okay, that's fine. I, yeah. can, I, know, where the, I know where the water's gonna start, it's gonna start about there. Okay, so what I'd say is then, let's get a really, um, let you see this is a slightly lighter green. Uh -huh. So mix a slightly lighter green and then we'll work, change the nuance of the green. So, you okay. know, yellow. I think I need some more white. Oh, look at me. I don't Going think, you know, white. yellow, you don't need white. Okay. Yellow. White can ruin so much. It can just take a really subtle translucent colour and make it very opaque, very kind of um, more yellow. I feel like... Who's that, who's that lovely lady who does all the mixing videos? Vicky Norman. I feel like Vicky Norman. Oh yeah, that's really smoky. Okay, so that's a... That's a different green. Very different green. Okay, so add some um, linseed oil. Or you can apply it from the palette knife if you want to. Oh, oh. Shall okay. I? Keep, keep with the brush, I think you're doing good. Okay. Okay, so just same again, kind of. Yeah, follow the marks that you've been looking at though. You're working, you know, Okay. And are you happy with the colour? It changes from wood to white. Is it too dark still? I quite like it. It's like camo green, which no artist ever said. <laughs> I, I like these gestures. It's quite, it's quite satisfying. It's good, you're feeling And remember, we'll smoke it all, so don't worry too much about making it perfect. And that crisp line with the masking tape is going to make sure you don't go into an area you're not meant to. Yeah. It's quite a handy tool for the learning to paint, I think. That's not the water yet though. No, of course it's not. But I'm just... Practicing. You know, practicing. And remember, if you want to use that brush to smoke, you can. You can blend, smoke, blend, smoke. You don't just have to do one thing at a time. One thing at a time. The whole thing is that you try this and then you try that. Just keep looking at the composition. Again, you love your short marks. Remember, you can stretch colour all the way. Yeah, you can... Some horizontals. Remember, it's a, a landscape, so... Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, that was nice. I think you're doing really well. I think this is just about you using paint and if... if in doing this, you're like, helps you understand what ideas are. Yeah. In a different way, how hard it is. Yeah. To get enough credit. It's not, it's definitely not as easy, although, I mean, I'm making a masterpiece here. 
do you know what? I feel like so many people who, who were learning at school, they might have had bad criticism that then put them off the career of art or, it, you know, it's not a career or that's not very good or that doesn't look like a Michelangelo. So why don't you just stop? We don't have that atelier training in the UK. You have to find, you have to go out and find it. Um, so, you know, and it, it really helps just to see someone um, just guiding you in a way which feels like you can just play. And this is really fun. Um, I feel like with everything in life, it's really important to make sure that you're having fun. If it's in your work or if it's in playtime. And obviously this feels like playtime because I've, I'm enjoying myself. Um, and even though we've been together for four years, this is the first time I've picked a paintbrush that really? isn't to do with painting walls. So I'm going to take this off now. really really good if anything I think you don't be afraid to apply that with your palette knife like in the lines you want it to okay. be so I'm doing I'm doing Li lots of horizontal lines now to this is going to be where the water yeah brilliant like it's going to look so good because if you think that's how it ripples as well so if you mm -hmm. bring that down but keep applying because that, that blue and the white that you've added the white pigment hasn't dried, so it will automatically try and lighten everything it touches. Okay. Almost see oil as sentient. It is trying to change the colour on the canvas, on the paper, as you're working on it. Yeah. So you have to be really, um, really vigilant with keeping your colours quite clean, quite kind of like the areas of colour you want to work with. Okay. Um. See how much of it, that really dense shadow you've got. You know, you've got a lot of light in this composition that you know, bringing in that lovely shadow. I mean, there's probably a little bit of brown in there that we're not using. We're keeping this a very simple composition for this training purposes. Yes. But feel like you can play with this green because this the whole reason we wanted to use this composition for you is because you loved that kind of dark sunset. Dark. Shall I put a bit more dark in, in here as well? Yeah. Like there's, there's that. Yeah. That bit there. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, but already it's looking more three D. That's all about sh uh, sh sort of shadows. It's so good, honestly. But do you see how the more paint you add, the better it looks? Yeah. You'll never get a good oil painting if you're like timid about applying it. Because if it's terrible, just get a bit of turps or a rag and wipe it away. You can take it away. This won't dry for a long time. Like you can keep adding to it. Okay, I would say... Careful with the smoking. Careful with the smoking. So, I have an idea. Okay. What we could do as an experiment is you could add a little bit of white with your palette knife. Just to show you where the bank is. Where land meets water. Okay. So just a little bit on the edge, crisp edge, and do a very thin line of white. Brilliant. Love it. That may be, again, sort of a little bit here, a little bit here. That's really good though. You see what I mean when you add colours later? Yeah. Just, just do a little touch, because what we're going to do is we're going to smoke it, but we're going to smoke it in a vertical rather than a horizontal. I just want to see if it works. It might not work. That's most of like art is mostly experimentation. Okay, let's just see if that. It's looking really, really good. Shall I put that? No, no, we can do that. If we need to. So all you should do is go up to the white line and drag it down all the way to the bottom of the paper carefully. Yeah. Get a rag, wipe some of that off. 
Mm. And try it again. From maybe find find your crisp lines. White helps though, so if you if you have a bit of white it then makes it lighter. Like it? You see how much more like water that looks because of the white. Mm. When when you don't do it with white, I think it looks a bit like less 3D. Okay. So you can add um, a bit of white with the piano. Okay. Maybe a little bit here, there. Just add a bit of white for the bank. Because you've done it almost in horizontals. So these touches of vertical, that can be our water. Okay. So it's like we're starting to, and you can use a bit of yellow if you want. You don't just have to use white. Like bring in the color of sunlight. Like if that's your sunlight color, when you add it to the water, your head has to think this is sunlight. Like you start associating color with okay. a sense of like organism. Right. Organism. Sure. So you start associating color with a sense of form. really good for your first Thanks. attempt. Same again. Maybe your brush will be a lot thicker, a lot lighter. Keep moving a rag. Yeah. Wiping off as much paint as you can. Do it though, that's beautiful. Remember, this isn't like. <laughs> I don't fuck don't it up. Don't fuck it up. Um, brilliant. Like, remember, this isn't like a, a canvas piece, this is a paper piece, so you can be more, uh, you can be lighter with it and you don't have to. Okay. Um, I'd say a bit more. I, like, and it's okay to use horizontals as well. Okay, like, so I can. You do can do that. I just, I just felt like it needed a sense of. Um, I, I feel like though that I need to do it like this rather than like this. Mm, but, but landscape is, is big. If you think your brush stroke small will make the landscape small, add okay. a bit more blue and then swipe it. Like you can add more blues and you know. Okay, where's my blue brush? You can add it with a palette knife if you like. But remember, the smaller the mark, uh, the, the smaller the space that you're creating. When you do big, big gestures. Yeah. Um, you create a sense of space and I, I actually really like the bigger the bigger brush technique but that's just me but this is about you exploring your own style so if you actually like it quite small and blocky then go with that I keep getting yeah. Phoebe's voice in my head from the video um, portrait, portrait of portrait, portrait artist. Artist. so watch that video it's up here links up here about when she says uh, she catches herself and she's doing tiny little marks and she says like no use a bigger brush yeah, well, Singer Sergeant used to have the bigger brush at the end. He'd add big marks because it loosens everything up slowly. You don't have to just take it down. Brilliant. I love that. I think it's looking really good. I think we can work on the sky again as well. I think that's really good. That's, uh... It's getting painty, isn't it? You can clean your brushes halfway through this. If you feel like everything gets a bit sort of dark and murky, just t take a time out and clean your brushes because it's better you do that than you ruin everything. Did I just ruin everything? No, you didn't. Know, I'm going to do it like that. <laughs> but you've lost some of that sensitivity you had with the vertical lines. It's cool though. If you didn't like the vertical lines. I do like the vertical lines. I think, yeah, I think with, with those sweeping marks you need like a fraction they're, they're almost like icing sugar on a cake. Don't get too like, because otherwise the painting will lose all its sort of like um, complexity. Right. Okay. So I think then, I mean, I think it's looking really, really good. No, no, seriously. I mean, I think there, there needs to be just a softening of that line. Okay, what do I do that with? Um, softer brush and just, just soften that line a bit. Okay. See, 
again, supplement it up here as well because there wasn't any. Okay, and then I think we need to touch up. So everything's gone green now. Uh, so what I think we need to do is touch up the sky and then add a few marks for the sunlight with the palette knife, and I think we're done. Okay. Okay, so let's get some white. Brilliant. Vertical lines are really good with lots of horizontals. It's about balance. So it's how you create atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're going to get some... The sky needs a bit more white. I'm happy for it to stay quite like pale, but I just think around the sun we need to make that look less like a kind of blob. Yes. Um, so just soften it with white. You know, you can literally apply even a tiny, tiny dab of pure white in the middle of the sun. Because that's, you know, the sun is blinding. It's not... It's the biggest source of light in the composition. Yeah. So that's the only thing that should be pure white. Nothing else. Maybe there is quite a lot of like. You know. Maybe I need. I mean, I don't mind more that. Yellow. I think b before we add the yellow, add, add lighten up the water. Like, you know, huge. Yeah. You got a streak of white. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I like that. Wicked. That's nice, isn't it? I actually don't mind it without the yellow. I I actually feel more confident applying paint with uh, the old palette knife. Well, that's a, probably then a good like bit of information. To, you know. I think I want to add some yellow to this. Okay, side. so make a pale. I mean, there's, you've got green in that now, so be careful. Yeah, so... You've got to be careful because all your brushes now are getting quite dirty. So, but um, I go like that as well. If you want to, we'll see what it does. Yeah, maybe just do it like that. That's quite nice. That's, that's wicked. Okay. Right. Honestly, for a first attempt. Brilliant. Um, I'm just going to put in. There you have it, a masterpiece by Rafe, and it was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. It looks amazing. So do I have to sign it now? Absolutely, get the pencil. Sign it, here. Wherever you like, bottom. I'm going to go right. So I hope you are as impressed with Ray's first attempt at oil painting as I am. Um, I think again with four colours and a few brushes um, and a good attitude you can really uh, experiment and see your own style with oil painting, mainly not being afraid to try and experiment and fail if it doesn't go well. I'm really glad this went so well because it's obviously reflecting well on me as a teacher. Not. Um, so please like and subscribe this video, we'd love to hear any comments you have of Rafe's first attempt at oil painting in the comments below and do follow me on at Jess Oliver Art on Instagram for more updates in the week um, and we'll see you next Monday for more, uh, for more art life fun in the studio.